Alright, hello, hello friends. How's it going? Good evening. Fuzzinator, Quapa, Eric, Tanuki, hello, hello, Funzi, Bakabot, hey. <laughs> Mr. Harsha, how are you? Seven months, thank you so much, my friend. Mr. Marsh82, good evening, good evening. Oh, hello, Mr. Trilobite, Dicynodon, hello, how are you? How's it going? Good evening, Drua, Super Switch, how's it going? Alright, so today we are going to be rebuilding my personal salvation unit uh, with some with a wooden plate. I'm not sure if the build command updated so I just did that. Hopefully it pops up. I think the keyboard command is not up to date though so give me a sec. Let me change that. I don't have that. Okay, pretty sure my K is built with uh, Gadron, Milky, Top, Helio, Switches, loop with. What the, what, what, what did I loop those with? Cardux uh, 2 5 and. 63.5 gram springs and desk keys films on a half PC plate. Alright, there is the K build command now. I mean, the keyboard command, my bad. All right, there, just updated that. Got some old stock Zelio V1s the other day and they're quite nice. Oh yeah, I personally do enjoy Zelio V1s because they're close to MX clears. So, what, which is what their intended purpose is, right? So I do like those. You ever tried uh, polyethylene tops on Telios? I have not. Is that good? Is that a nice combo? Do you like that? Never tried it. One drunk man, hello. Didn't know wooden plates were a thing? Well, now they are. <laughs> now they are. So that's the whole point of today's stream, right? Still waiting for Parium plate. Yeah, well. Soon we'll have plates made out of material that slowly decomposes over time so that you, you know you suddenly have a reduction in material and then suddenly it feels different as you type on it. Just kidding. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> but no, I haven't tried it. Uh, the PE top. Telios. Diego, I really like Batman. Wasn't it so good? I... I thought it was really good. I'm not sure about other people, but I thought it was good. So what kind of wood? So yes, let's talk about that. And let's also get myself a Kit Kat. A client of mine was really nice and sent some sent some matcha flavored Kit Kats. Was Epic High as epic as it looked? Yeah, it was great. I so I went to see Epic High yesterday, which was a really fun concert. I enjoyed it a lot. Second time I go in three years. 
and it was just as good as last time, I think. Um, but yeah. Alright guys, do I eat this the most civil way or do I eat this the most savage way? There's only two ways, savage or civil. Savor the flavor. Eat it the tea. Okay. Okay. So that's good for a snack. So I'm gonna be using this Zeal 60 PCB today, cause I have it, cause I have it around. Let's just get my salvation out here. So this is my salvation build. Uh, this one has um, pewters on a, um, I believe this is a half FR4 plate. And let me see what PCB I used back then. And we have a weird flex PCB um, from from Wilba. Pretty sure. So how about we before we jump onto the build itself, we can try this one. I can try typing on it. You guys kind of can try to remember what it sounds like. You know, if, it, if you like it, then good. If not, it's fine. The reference is not going to be a good one because it's not the same switches after all. So it doesn't really matter. But I'll just do it anyway. For your sake um, and then we can jump onto the build does it taste clacky <laughs> it tastes good thank you <laughs> all right so let's try that all right Weird flex with half plate is lit. Yeah, so I'll talk about the I'll talk about the wooden plate in just a second, okay? Just give me a sec, okay? So we'll try this first, okay? All right. All right. So this is Peter's on half FR four plate with a weird flex PCV with some Hammerwork CRP round three caps, okay? Oh, Mr. Konako, how are you? I'll hydrate in just a second. All right. So let's give this one a shot first. All right, here we go. Right, so this is what FR4 sounds like. So somewhat, yeah, like on the slightly higher pitch side, not quite like, you know, kind of a bright sound. That's just generally yeah, like what FR4 can, kind of does sound like. Um, and so I, it's hard to describe it with different switches too, because different switches just have different profiles to them, like how they sound and how they feel. Um, but you know, that's like, that's just a reference. Um, and here's like the modifiers if you want to listen to them. Do that. 
All right, so this is what Peter sound like, right? And so today we're gonna take this plate out, you know, and do a new build on a Z60 PCB with this trilobite boards plate, right? So trilobite boards was kind to send this out for us to try out, um, and basically to, to demo it. Um, and it is my first time using a wooden plate, actually. Uh, I've used like you know carbon fiber, aluminum, you know polycarb, FR4, you name it. Um, but I haven't tried any wooden plates. Um, I've tried. Oh well, I have. The the Dolma technically counts, but that's an integrated uh, wooden plate. Uh, that one basically it's all part of the same top piece. Uh, in the case of the Dolma, it's basically the the switch holder basically milled out into the top piece. Um, so it's a bit different. Um, and also the layout that one's like an alley style layout. So so that that would also be different. Anyway, so. Will this wood fuck? Oh, I guess Peaches isn't here today, huh? I see, not, no wonder the, the punishments are not being issued left and right. All right, so, I feel like wood will be in the quieter side, I don't know. So I don't know what to expect. And the reason I chose alpacas was because, you know, people have tried alpacas um, and people probably know what the reference would be like. And, you know, it's a switch that's red, like relatively readily available. So, yeah. All right. So Trilobite sent this out. This is a wooden plate for a 60%. So this will work for any tray mount boards, basically. So this will work on your, on your Fiel, on your Clipe, on your tofu, on your you know poker, you name it, right? Uh, so this one has uh, fixed um, fixed backspace and enter, you know, ANSI standard, uh, you know, ability for caps lock here and seven U bottom row, okay? And then fixed step, uh, fixed split right shift. Uh, so it's uh, so it's a fixed seven U layout, which is pretty nice. I'm actually a little bit concerned about the stab orientation here, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. I think they should be fine. They're just, just right. Okay. So anyway, so this plate is made out of um, three layers, right? So this is, so, so this is veneer, right? Um, so the layers are, you know, uh, vacuum back with epoxy resin. So it's very durable. Um, so, you know, this, this won't like just, just break easily. I mean, obviously if you, if you, if you like bend it, like, yeah, like this is still like of a, a few millimeters. It's not 1.5. It's not the, it's not the standard 1.5 millimeters, um, that you see on the regular plate. Like if you actually go to the link on Trilobite Boards' uh, website, right, you'll see that, um, they say that right there that the plate is... 2.6 millimeters or three millimeters, depending on uh, what um, what type of wood you have. So on the so there's three layers, right? So the top layer is zebra wood in this case. So this one's zebra wood, and the bottom two layers are gonna be uh, maple uh, hardwood maple. Uh, so maple has pretty nice uh, sound characteristics overall. Uh, people use ma maple a lot. Uh, for example, I know from my experience in drumming that a lot of drumsticks are made out of maple because they um, they capture a very nice resonant sound in musical instruments. And so I know for a fact that like you know maple is widely used for musical instruments, and uh, it is a very nicely resonating uh, wood. So the so the bottom two layers are made out of maple, and the top layer is made out of zebra wood for the looks, right? So it looks pretty nice. Um, so the so the idea of this plate is that you know obviously is to achieve a different sound that's you know character characteristically different from any metallic or you know fiberglass like FR4 or plastic plates, right? So the idea is here that we have um, a different a different sound profile. Uh, the reason why it's thicker is so that it is more durable. And as you can see here, there are very carefully laser cut ledges here at the bottom of the plate. The reason for these ledges is to allow for the switches and the stabilizers to properly clip and stay in place. Um, so as you can see, the ledges basically are thinner portions of 
are basically going to be thinner portions of the plate where the switch can actually clip on properly. So this is a very nice detail in my opinion. I think this is like something that if someone were making a plate like this, it could be easily overlooked. Um, so, so it's pretty nice. So the, I guess the question will be, I think, I think one question I do have for myself, like over time, is like how will wooden plates, like, you know, like, will they stand the test of time? Like, doesn't wood technically warp or like, does it like, is it susceptible to humidity in the air? Like what happens if you live in a very humid area? Does that change things? But I mean, I assume that, you know, in a layer like this, and once you install it, once you have all the switches on and everything, like it probably isn't a problem because it, you know, it just stays in place, right? Um, but yeah, it should be pretty rigid. Um, but yeah, so it looks really nice. So we're gonna try building with this. And I do like that it's a fixed layout, so we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, let's give this a shot. So I'm just gonna test the PCB. I think it, I know it works from a previous build that I did on this one. I, I think, I believe I used to have one of my older 60% on this PCB before. Um, just gonna check on the uh, here if it's on. Okay, that, that, that sounds like it is. All right, uh, just need to change the layout actually to full backspace. So I'm just gonna do that. And then the rest should be normal. Okay, and then I'm just gonna save this. Uh, Zeal 60 personal full backspace. Okay, cool. So, okay, PCB I know should be working fine. So we can just unplug it for now. Warping and humidity are solved by multi by using multiple layers and epoxy resin. Okay, so that's that's relieving to know. That's good. So the multiple layers will basically help with the durability of the plate. All right, cool. So also, if you have questions for uh, you know trilobite boards or um, here, they're they're going to be in chat today. So um, you know, if you have questions, just feel free to ask. Um, yeah, because I'm not an expert, so. I'm just, I'm just doing the building. Can you believe March is almost over? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, it's already like the second quarter, which is kind of crazy. All right, so I have some alpacas here. Um, I, um, I have some stabs here. I think I just need to re-loop some of these steps and loop a new step for the full backspace. So let's just do that. FYI, I just changed my username to the proper name. Oh, okay, nice. That's easier for people then. That's good. Whichever is fine. So. But if that makes it easier for people, that's probably better. It's going to grow a leaf layer that acts as foam. <laughs> oh man. March almost over. Maybe I go to Korea for spring break since no quarantine now. Ooh, that sounds fun. Also, wait, there's no quarantine in Cor for to visit Korea now? That's kind of nice. Didn't know that. All right. So I think I just need to reload the wires on this. So. So looping steps today should be much shorter. Also, not that many stabs anyway. Exempted, fully vaccinated. Oh, sweet! That's kind of that's pretty nice. So, not a bad idea to visit, huh? I haven't been in so many years though. I have not been to Korea in almost ten years now. So. It would be interesting to go. 
but I don't have the funds right now to make it out all the way there and make accommodations for everything. I think that's the, that's the real problem. A long time ago, it was easier to do that stuff with my relatives, but now it's a little more difficult. So. Okay, so this is north facing. Gas ruined my travel plans this year? Yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, I heard that uh, California finally hit $6 per gallon, which is absolutely insane. Like, man. <laughs> Energy costs, just in general. It's not even just gas. I think gas is just like the... We love using gas as the excuse, right? But there's a lot of other issues. Gas is just like the, the gateway excuse. That's still not even EU prices, is that right? I don't know what EU prices are like for... I mean, you guys pay for the leader, I suppose. But that said, I think... Another thing is, at least here, you your mileage is gonna be... Like your daily travel mileage is much higher here. Like the distance, net distance traveled is probably higher here because things are separated by bigger gaps. Um, whereas in Europe, at least, things are a bit more densely located, situated. Today was two, 207 euro per liter. Oh, wow. Okay. That is. That is quite expensive. That is quite expensive. I guess it only gets worse with, especially with the current conflict, huh? That's already down from 225, man. Sanity. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. The world is wild. Team Solar and EV, but I work from home. I don't leave my house for days at a time, so I'm not sure why I'm saying. <laughs> I guess so. That said, I mean, to use renewable sources is very nice. Um, I do wish renewable was... I mean, it, it is more accessible now than it's ever been, but we are still not quite there to make full replacements for every aspect of life, you know? It's... But, but yeah, especially like the people who travel long distances and stuff, it's it's harder. But yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to see more electric vehicles and renewable source energy sources for for travel, for transportation, whether it's hybrid or fully electric. Fill up my tank in the RAV yesterday and didn't even look at the price. It is what it is. Dang. Bold, but yeah, it is. It is indeed what it is. It's not like it's not like you can do anything about it, right? Because it's it's something that you need for your for your daily living, whether it's for work or whatever it is. So, it's not not much one can do about it. I mean, hopefully our governments and the people in charge can help ameliorate some things I mean obviously uh, the industry as well but yeah at least for the time being it, it's 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 a little ugly 
Able to tank the cost of gas, but I feel for the people who can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's tough. Used to be a pre used used to be a huge deal pre pandemic. My cost for commute was effectively zero, but post pandemic I permanent work from home. Much preferable though. It is strange when I don't see other human beings in person for a few days. That is true. I I guess that that definitely has changed in the past few years where like we uh we have gotten quite accustomed to this whole like digital world slash like a lot of work from home and kind of not seeing a lot of people in person. And yeah, it does feel a little eerie when you sometimes do. Speaking of in-person interactions, I had a really bizarre one today. Um, just nothing that was very warranted, but... Yeah, just a somewhat unpleasant in-person interaction I had. We all forgot how to touch grass? That's what I would tell the person that I had a nasty interaction with today. I wish they had touched grass today. Or maybe they just woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but... Yeah, I just had someone snap at me for an, an error that a mistake that they made, and then they pulled a race card about it, and I was just like, "Okay, I'm just gonna stay quiet because nothing's gonna make anything better here." I'm dying for my salvation. 2,500 orders is a tall task for salvation, so I understand the delay. Yeah, it was... I hate it when a stranger yells at me. Yeah, same. <laughs> Definitely don't. not enjoyable. And I'm just like, um... Okay. I'm sorry you had a bad day today. Sorry for the misunderstanding or, you know, trouble. But I can't help you being upset. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to go into too much details because it's just frustrating. But it basically makes a few things inconvenient for my uh, few daily things because they are like, they are like, you know, they 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 like manage a service that's like convenient for me. But yeah, they apparently snap, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, Trilo by thank you so much for the tier one sub, I appreciate that. Also I I, I will put that poll up soon, Mr. One Drunk Man and we'll remember the result and go from there. <laughs> Especially since Peaches isn't here right now. We must take advantage. Do you like the Jujutsu Kaisen movie, Diego? I thought it was great. I, I thought it was great too. I really liked it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I Obviously, I have not read the the source material, like the manga and stuff. So I don't know like what the character development is like after this. Obviously, uh, I personally found the main character a little annoying, um, but I'm sure they developed to be different people afterwards because this is the, the whole point of it is character development on that particular character eventually, right? But yeah, um, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed the supernatural related stuff, the animation relating to that. All right, let's. Let's first hydrate since Mr. Konako asked for it earlier. I hate crybaby characters. Yes, thank you. Oh my god, I feel validated. Yeah, I hate crybaby characters. Especially main characters who are crybabies. I think like a side character, sometimes them being a crybaby tends to be a little bit of a... Sometimes even like a comedic relief, but... If it's a relatively principal character, like even if it's not the protagonist, but even if it's like close enough to the main characters, it's, it just gets really annoying. I don't like it. 
All right, let's run this poll really quick. Will this, will this wood fuck? Yes, yay, nay. Get tongued, ODM. Peaches isn't here to smite chat, yeah. The thing I hate it when a character friends dies in front of them, they get called a crybaby character. Okay, that is different though. <laughs> Having your friend die in front of you and the main character crying because their friend died is very different from having having a having a character that simply is a little bit too prone to complaining, so to speak. How thick is the plate? I believe it is. This one should be exactly 2.6 millimeters. <laughs> I love how people are just picking the third option just because. Zebra woods for my M0110. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw that those were in stock too. Oopsie, I did, so did not clip properly. Wow, I guess people believe, people think that Mr. ODM should get tonged. Oh, maybe not. If it's a draw, he won't get the punishment. Wow. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, need to get some washers here. A couple of them. It's a draw, yeah. Only six, seven TV slots left? Wow. That's uh, very few. Gotta get in my daily bad take today? Oh boy. What what bad take are you going to make now? You, you made a decent take earlier, but I don't know what else you're, you're gonna say. Holtzman, alpaca should be good for this plate. Probably going to use some long stem linears on my salvation when that gets here. Nice. Long stem, long pole, yeah, the long pole stem switch, uh, switches are pretty interesting. I mean, I personally am a little bit less keen on a, on the, um, on the decreased travel, personally, but, ooh, God damn it. but they sound interesting. Oh gosh, I just got that. Dropping things left and right today. Mm -hmm. 
I think long pulses just make any board sound full and nice. That is true. I don't disagree with that at all. I do think they sound nice. I just wish they didn't decrease the travel. That's the only thing. I can I can tell the difference, so it's just it kinda of bothers me after a while. That's all. Don't worry, I voted no in this poll already. I got it over with. Um, also, what do you think of the Phoenix T-Kill as Pooh C-Killer? Um, I think the Phoenix T-Kill is probably going to be pretty nice. Um, I mean, I personally trust uh, Mr. Um, what's his name? Mr. Wes Foxtrot, who is a designer, Cable Car Designs. Um, he's done the Prophet, he's done the An Anzi, uh, he's done the Cypher. He's done a few boards now, and he, he you know, all the boards that he's made are pretty nice. Um, so I would I trust the Phoenix T kill would be pretty good too. I I honestly can't see it going wrong, really. So yeah, that's that's kind of like my take on it. I don't know what exactly ex like what what exactly I should be expecting because, well, you know they they are boards that haven't released or anything like that. So, but but that said. It should be it should be a nice board. It should be a nice board. Do you consider NK Creams as long pull? Not in their original housing, no. I think the, in their original housing they are not technically long pull because the, the travel is the same. Uh, the the housing is the housing is different to accommodate for that. So no, technically NK Cream should not count as that. Unless they are taken out of their housing, the stems. When you take them out of the housing and put them somewhere else, then technically they're longer. The, the pull is longer than it should be, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's long long PP in my bucket to switch bottoms out on the pull rather than the stem. Yeah, yeah, I do agree. Yeah, cause cause if it bottoms out on the on the on the central part instead of on the on the sides, that's that's what it is. The small staff thing is so frustrating to deal with. Ah, it's it's okay. Genetic Lab Huskies. Oh yeah, Huskies are pretty nice. Yeah, I did try Huskies before. Those are pretty good too. Alright. So these cutouts are a little bit of a tight fit though for sure. But it doesn't look like... I do wish... Uh... I do wish these cutouts were slightly, slightly more forgiving, slightly wider. How 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 big are these cutouts? I think these cutouts could be a, a smidge bigger, to be honest. Wider specifically, a smidge wider and a smidge taller too. On both sides, actually, I think they could. I think the I think the laser cut here could go, maybe a millimeter across this way. On these side and this side and this side and this side and this side and then you know pretty much every side should, should could be could be like one and a half millimeters maybe uh, maybe like one millimeter taller and then maybe like a fraction wider but I think the width is fine I think the width is, should be holding fine for this But just just for building purposes, I do think it could help. I think creams have a medium long pull that bottoms out at the same time as the sides, which gives a lot of character and sound quality. Yeah, I mean they certainly are uh, one of those like slightly louder switches in general, so I don't disagree with that at all. Okay, looks like the switch is clipping fine. I see it clipping, which is pretty sweet.
Have you ever built with a wooden plate before? No, that's why this is interesting to me too. This is why we are doing this today because I have not before. Well, I have only done it in the Doma, which is an integrated wooden plate, but I feel like it doesn't count because it's basically part of the body and like basically it's the characteristic will depend on the body of the whole board itself too. But in this case, it's just a plate, so kind of curious to see what a wooden plate in a in an aluminum case sounds like rather than a wooden plate as part of a wooden keyboard, you know? That's basically the main difference. Okay, so the cutouts are all in the appropriate places, which is good. All right, let's test out these stamps next. Sluggish on the enter. Let's check if it's a switch. A sluggish feeling. I'm not sure if it's a switch or if it's something else. Let's check the switch first, and if not, we check the stab. Maybe the stab is a little bit. No, I think it's just a switch. Okay, I'll... that switch is bad. Okay. Are so good. I think the new cream stems is slightly bigger, cannot fit either the cherry housing or tangerine top housing. Oh, interesting. I don't do too much Franken switch stuff, so I can't really tell you, like, oh yeah, like that's probably what it is. Yo, Mr. Ninewalker, how's it going, buddy? Oh, 
Only Frank and Switch stuff I've done is making Jailhouse Blues. Oh, Jailhouse Blues. Wow, that's a throwback. I have not heard about Jailhouse Blues in a while. I know I have a few friends who are really big fans of J Blues. Um, but I pretty much don't really see them much these days. So it's, but yeah, they used to talk a lot about Jailhouse, Jailhouse Blues back in the day. But yeah. Definitely a Switch I don't hear much about these days. J spacers, MX blues with a spacer between the click jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's a way to make blues not clicky. Never managed to make jailhouse blues. Some, always something messing up with the spacer. Yeah, it's a finicky process. That's a fact about jailhouse blues is that it's a finicky process. Oh, I think I'm out of alpacas here. Oh, I mean, well, not really out of them. I just have more. I just need to go get a couple of extra switches. I think I thought I had counted right, but I didn't count right. Oh, no way. I do have just the right amount. Oh, never mind. I have just the right amount of switches. Okay, cool. Sweet. I guess I did not miscount. I even accounted for the dud. Perfect. I normally have a few extras, so that's good. All right. Looking good so far. Does Van even sell J-Spacers anymore? Not sure. I actually do not know that. I've never heard that one before. Me neither, so that's why we're here. This is why exactly we're here to try it out. All right, let's get uh, our fan. This play would work with the Bakken Echo, right? Yes, it would, because you have, uh, this is a tray mount plate, so yes. It should work with the Bakken Echo, or the Unicorn. As long as the stabilizer cutouts work, it should be fine. Where can I get the plate? Uh, do exclamation build, and there is a link directly to the store where they are selling them. It's trilobiteboards.com. Is the K with- oh no, the K is the one over here. This is the salvation over here. So I'll actually take this out of the way for a sec. The K is this one. Oopsie. The K is this one right here. That's the K. Yeah. Alright, let's- Get these. Let's get the soldering done quickly. Should be easy.
Split backspace sold out though. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I mean, try by this here in chat. Maybe you can ask if they are planning to make any of the um, split backspace ones soon. If the timing is right, maybe you can just wait, you know, a little and it'll be ready soon enough. I don't know. Very simple mod to make a 2 UVS into a split BS. This is true, all you need to do is cut those little thingies and that's about it. It is very simple to do it. Very very simple. I did get a 60% PCB, says Holtzman, that used the Space Invader switches for the Salvation, just need to find some switches and caps. Whoa! 60% SI build? That sounds super interesting, actually. Space Invaders are both the Linear and the Quick Can, they're both really nice. They're, they're actually some of the really nice, like, they're one of the best switches out there. I think they're really interesting switches. Space Invaders. But yeah, definitely, uh, you, you do get a little bit limited with the choice of keycaps and, 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 and like you know just kind of having to harvest switches and stuff but that said it's they are pretty interesting so hopefully you do find what you need also I'm gonna just be quickly undo this jumper and change the jumper here this one SIs are definitely a rare breed. Yeah, I guess it's mostly that vintage in general is not as common, right? And people's interest normally ranges up to just MX. And at best, a little bit of Tobre. Uh, but normally it doesn't go too far there either. The interest in Tobre definitely has grown a little bit with the aftermarket cases being available and whatnot. But even then, uh, and also like the bigger marketing campaigns from the, from like PFU, Fujitsu and so on. But even then, uh, yeah, like the rest of Vintage, however, is basically kind of close to a smaller subsets of the community. So it's understandable. Not to mention a lot of this stuff isn't like made anymore, so yeah. It's all about the Shock V2s. Wow. I have to say, I cannot, I've tried low profile stuff a few times and it just it just wasn't for me it kind of felt like going back to my um to my macbook uh keyboard chiclet kind of style yo mr nick delard hello how's it going how are you doing my friend got warm got a little chillier this week how's new york treating you it's not even chilly, it's just cool actually. It's very cool weather actually. I like it right now. I, I don't think they caught as much as SMK or Alps. That is true. They definitely did not. Not the Space Invaders at least. But yeah, in order of popularity it pretty much goes like MX by far and then a little bit of Topri and then Alps to some small extent. And then pretty much the rest which is quite quite a small small number. L 
Elunda score asks, I've never heard of a wooden play before, what can you expect with the feel? Uh, I think with the feel I expect it to be just about as rigid as some other materials that we've seen, like FR4 or even... I'm actually not sh probably softer than aluminum, but because it is still like a slightly thicker layered wooden plate, like I would still expect some amount of rigidity, but the sound will probably be you know, different hopefully, and unique. It's actually, it's not even different that I hope for. I just hope for something like unique, or something that's like, the, oh, okay, maybe experimenting a little bit with this or that could could make it sound more interesting, or maybe experimenting with different switches, um, that kind of stuff could make this whole Thing more more fun to try so I would have tried a weird flex PCB again today but I did not have an extra one to try with so I, I decided to use a zeal 60 but um, either way it works um, and the only difference is that I don't have that flex flex cut whatever you know in the in the middle uh, but it's fine considering that there's a full plate anyway I don't really need it Alright. Alright. It's gonna be 90 here in Vegas soon. Holy shit, that's so hot. <laughs> in March. 90 in March. Damn. Oh my god, I can't imagine that. I do not like the idea of that. Does flex cut do anything for a full plate? Not too much. It depends on the plate though. Sometimes like a polycarb plate with a flex cut can, can definitely feel a little soft. Uh, like a decent bit softer. Like you can still feel something kind of like sink in a little bit. Also depends on the mounting and whatnot. So it depends on many factors. Uh, it definitely contributes to some degree of like, you know, flexibility. Um, but I would not say like, oh, it's gonna be as pronounced as something like a half plate where you're pretty much typing directly on the on the PCB, right? So yeah. All right, PCB works, amazing. All right, it's already time. It's only been like an hour, and we're here, pretty much done with the assembling. That's at 60% PCBs. That's what's nice about them. I actually don't remember where the mounting positions for the Salvation were, but I imagine they are here in the traditional spots. And then, was there anything else? I don't even remember where else I would find it. Maybe below the spacebar or something. Um, no, I think it was just the sides. Okay, maybe the middle. I actually don't even remember where all the positions were. I mean, let's just do the sides first though. Let's take off the sides first. I just do not remember where the positions were. Maybe it was just the two. Oh, it was just the two, I guess. Nice, okay. Alright, so there's our Wilbatech PCB. This is technically a Wilbatech PCB too, just an older one. Oh, it looks like this moved a little bit. Doesn't really matter. This little sticker shifted a little, I mean the little bump ons shifted slightly. I think it's probably because I kept playing around with it. <laughs> It doesn't really make a difference though, because as long as the little uh, tab is compressing, it's pretty much the same. I think you can always get extras as well. All right, cool. Do will bit PCBs come with ESE protection? Um, I don't know. 
But I mean, what what would you do that you would be shocking your PCB so much? Alright, the nice thing about the salvation case is that it also will fit any USB mini ports, which is great. Quite a few people have killed their PCBs with ESD. That is, that is true, I guess. I've just definitely seen it happen. Ooh, bouncy! Oh wait, okay, let me see if I can show it without the table moving so much. Let's see. I'm not sure if you can see it, but... I'm trying to press on the desk mat so the desk mat isn't the thing that's compressing. Yeah. But, decent amount of bounce because thanks to the salvation mounting method. Pretty interesting, right? Has a lot of this, like, flexibility. Anyway, kind of something something that's unique about it, that's for sure. Okay, let's put some keycaps on it. Um, what keycap should we put on this, by the way? Should we put some um, GMK stuff? I do have like GMK ASCII or something like that. Or like GMK Hammerhead, Ursa. Um, I have CRP. You have any Insta sets besides Irish? I only have some. I have like a couple of the black and black sets, but that's about it. Might be a dumb question, but can the Salvation do plateless? Yes, you can, uh, you absolutely can do just plateless as well. Yes. I mean, we can just transfer these CRP caps over. That's also just a do like a feasible thing. Like I, I already have the caps here anyway, so. Pretty mount playlist two based. I mean, that's how. That yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> train mount, train mount playlist is actually pretty nice. I remember when I first had like regular, regular um train mounts, and yeah, playlist was a good way to do. Do this. Except against white and black on blackboards. <laughs> True. All right. Let's see. Let me see what uh. Let me see what kind of uh CRP I have still, like unmounted. I, I should have something that's not mounted right now. CRP. Oh, okay. Maybe I can do like Desco black. That would look kind of nice. Or two five five one H A D. That one looks cool too. I think I think I also have Peacock. All right, I'm gonna go get a CRP set maybe, and then we can also try maybe GMK if I have something around here. Be right back. Sounds good. BRB. Okay, I am back. I brought 2551, Tulip, Desco Black, and Peacock. Basically all my R3 stuff right here. Except for this one, I guess. 
Um, hmm. What am I feeling on this silver? Tulip is nice. 2551 is pretty nice too, though. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm feeling Desco Black today. I don't know what. I don't know why. I'm kind of feeling Desco Black today. The cool scent. <laughs> Jordan, hello. Everyone, don't trust Diego. That tiger is stuffed full of heroin. Enough to dump in New York City's water supply and get everyone high AF. Yeah, God. Everyone's gonna get so high. Y'all, y'all don't even know what's coming. All right, I'm doing, I'm doing Desco Black because I'm feeling like it. Have you had the chance to try 21 KB keycaps? I have some on order, uh, so I'll have, I'll get to try them maybe like in a while, but not right now, not yet, but hopefully soon. Should I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the old style and I'm just gonna do arrow keys for my wind keys. I don't know why, I just kind of feel like doing that. Oh, here's my tab. Alright. Alright. Twenty-one KB sold out fast this morning? Oh, I see, they had a small restock, huh? Yeah, I have a, I have a separate like batch of caps coming in, so I'm gonna wait until that comes in. The OG dice of way, <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is ooh seven new. Here come our alphas. Very lit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight, nine, zero. Yeah, I think I think Desco Black was the right choice. I really like this look on this. Man, CRP is so good. <laughs> I love CRP. Uh, 
Okay. <clears throat> Looks like a keyboard. It sure does. Alright, let's put an artisan on this. Just gonna pick one, okay? Don't bother trying to convince me otherwise. Let me see. Mm. Let's see. What do I feel like putting on today? Oh, okay. Let's do this one. Let's do this. BBW. This big bad wolf that I got the other day. Shazam! When will the salvation fulfill? Um, I think they were hoping for an update in April. Um, so that's the soonest I would expect an update. But it is a lot of units. So I think to be safe, um, maybe like by mid-April you should probably expect an update. I don't know what it's gonna be exactly though, like when. But yeah, that's, that's more or less when I would hope for something. I don't know when exactly they're gonna ship though. I think they're still like in processing and such. Like Salvin's working hard. <laughs> so, do you prefer full backspace on 60s? I prefer both. I, both are fine actually for me. I, I do use both. Uh, I do use both uh, 60 um, full backspace or split backspace just fine. Um, so I don't have a particular preference. I, I, both are good. Both are fine with me. I do prefer full backspace on anything bigger than 65% though. Just in general. All right. So here it is. Uh, what caps are these? This is a uh, CRP Desco Black. CRP Desco Black. All right. I only do split backspace on 60s. Yeah, so pretty much I do most of my split backspace is only on 60s as well. Uh, so yeah. I, I used to do split backspace more on 65%, but I don't do it as much anymore. Yeah. Alright. Okay, friends. We're already done here and ready to type on this. Oh, a salvation indeed, Itharak, how are you? Good evening to you as well. How's it going? Okay, so let's try this out, shall we? <clears throat> Has salvation shipped already? The answer is no. This is my prototype unit. But as I said, expect an update maybe like in mid-April. I don't know exactly when they're gonna ship and stuff. All right, let's try this out. I don't know what to expect at all. So you guys will be surprised or disappointed or elated with me. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is CRP round three, um, Desco black keycap. These are PVT keycaps, cherry profile. On a zebra wood top, um, hardwood plate. Uh, the the plates are 2.6 millimeter thick, but they have little tabs for your switches and stabilizer to clip properly. Three layers of veneer. Uh, basically, the top layer is zebra wood for the looks, and then the bottom two layers are made out of maple, maple hardwood um, layers. And yeah, uh, they are, um, you know, vacuum sealed and with epoxy resin. They're pretty durable, and you can put them in pretty much any 60% that allows tray, tray plates like these. All right.
The alpaca sound like cherries with the scratch. I think the scratchy sound is probably coming from my fingers, actually. It's like the keycap sound, right? Because they don't feel scratchy as far as the switches go. I think it's the sound from the PVT. The texture of the PVT. Yeah. Has that graininess. CRP caps just have that little bit of grip. Yeah. And my hands are a little dry, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, let me try it again, okay? So I definitely hear a little bit of the resonance of the case, which actually makes me wonder if the plate is rubbing anywhere or anything like that. But as far as the feeling of the plate goes, it's kind of like middle amount of rigidity, um, which is basically not too soft, not too harsh. Um, one thing I do have to comment about it is that the um, it's very, it's very, it's very quiet. It's pretty quiet compared to like the, I mean, obviously compared to Peter build, it's pretty quiet, but it's definitely quieter than, than I, than I thought it would be. So it's definitely a little bit of a quieter kind of build. But yes, the space bar does sound a little bit metallic. Loop <laughs> those fingers up. I mean, I do have some hand cream actually. And there is maybe some resonance, so let me actually just double check the that the plate isn't rubbing or anything, so I can just take out the plate. Actually, let's listen to the mods first and see if it ma makes a difference. How do you like the mounting system on the Salvation? Oh, I love it. I think it's super nice because it's like very soft everywhere. Um, like you can kind of tell that there is a bit of like bounce everywhere, which is the nice part about the Salvation is that it has a lot of give. Even in, uh, on a full plate like this, like you can definitely tell that the that the mounting system is definitely doing some favors here by allowing it to sort of like transfer that vibration down to the down to the little tabs that hold it. Um, so that part is nice about it. Uh, the 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 case itself definitely has a little bit of that metallic sort of sound to it. Maybe it's just a resonance inside of the case. I think that also just depends on what kind of build you have in it. And so I mean that's what we're gonna check for. So. Yeah. All right. Let me just go through the mods first, and then we can we can go through like the plate and see if there's anything we can do about it. How about that? All right. The only foam you could use for it is play foam, right? I imagine it would be a little bit more challenging to use any kind of foam underneath the PCB because there is a very small amount of space. So, and you also have to somehow cut around the portions of there's tabs which means that it, you need to kind of modify the piece of whatever that you put on um, to have you know room for the spacers uh, for the things that hold the the plate and the PCB I mean the PCB sorry uh, so yeah so that'll be the only thing anyway so here are the mods
I have a feeling something's kind of rubbing here in the plate. But the rest sounds pretty good. Yeah, no, it sounds pretty nice. There's a little bit of resonance here on the right side, which makes me believe that the plate is rubbing on the case, which I believe happens if the plate is a little too sharp at the edges. So I'm just gonna double check. Okay, so let's just check. So one thing I'm just gonna do is take out the assembly. Okay, let's see. Okay, so one thing that I personally suggest people to watch out for on if you when you when you you know if you get a salvation when you get it is that can you guys see let me point it out with a maybe a pencil works. So um, you guys see these corners are slightly rounded right here, right here, right here, and right here. So those those are slightly slightly rounded um, so I would just suggest uh, if the plate is a little bit on the sharp end you can always sand it slightly or clip it um, just to see how it sits so like you know I'm gonna just place it on and it sits, sits fine I, like I don't think it there's anything really interfering with it but just in case you you think it does you can always just double check before you put it down so in my case, I'm gonna experiment a lot, a little bit of, like, I don't know. I don't know if it was rubbing actually. I don't really see it. Like, I don't see any kind of like, like any kind of like, you know, like proof that it's like rubbing, but I'm just gonna like shave a little bit off the corner with a clipper here. Just a teeny bit. Okay, that's enough. And off of this corner. I mean, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, so that's why we're gonna just experiment and see if it changes anything. If it doesn't, then it was not rubbing. If it, if it, if it, if it changes something, then it was rubbing, right? So that's pretty much the the test I'm gonna do. Just gonna round it off a little bit on the plate. Okay. So I rounded off the plate a little bit. You know, just like chipped off the sharp edge of the corner. And then just gonna put it back. And then put the screws back on. So just line it up to the middle of the case. Put the screw. And do the same for the other one. Okay. And now we can try typing on it again and you guys can tell me if it was any different from earlier. Yeah. I think that's I think that's probably the fairest way for me to do it is like I, I change it slightly and then you guys tell me what it sounds like. Okay. I didn't I, I left the mic in the same position. So yeah we can try the mods again. So here are the mods again. Oh yeah, that's better. So I think maybe the plate was actually rubbing. So yeah, I think I think the maybe one of the corners was just rubbing slightly. So let's try typing on it fully again and see if that kind of changes a, a, a decent bit. I I think um I think that was probably what it was. So yeah, if you have like a sharper plate, so a lot of the plates that you guys will have made 
um, like you know whether you have it made through like send cut send or you know laser boost or whatever or maybe just buy one off the shelf a lot of them have sharp slightly sharper corners um, so uh, this one you know this one does have slightly sharper corners so it's it's fine to round it off slightly at the corners if you have issues with, specifically with salvation the corners of the interior are slightly rounded probably for the tooling uh, to work better when the machining is happening for the salvation so just so just so you know, I mean, and I've actually seen this same thing happen with like some other tray cases um, that I've owned. So yeah, like if you have sharp edges at the at the corners, just just double check me that you know maybe they're not rubbing or anything like that against the case. Um, and also you know just make sure that you're, you're centering your 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 assembly right in the middle of the case too. Um, so so that's gonna make a difference as well. All right, let's try it out. Can't see. There we go. I think the sound actually that like that like weird metallic sound went away. So it was probably that. It was probably just rubbing against the case and creating a bit of resonance there. So that's good. So I'm glad that it wasn't anything to do with you know the case. Like other like it was not nothing that you know we couldn't like figure out. So that's good. Um, because it's a wood play, we can call it docky. You can call it whatever you want, my friend. You can call it meta. Thocky, poppy, marbly, creamy. Um, yes. But it sounds very nice now that we've made sure that the plate isn't rubbing or anything. And one more time, I'll just go through the mods. Sounds pretty nice. I actually really like how it sounds. It's definitely more muted of a sound that I thought it would be. I thought it actually would be a bit brighter, or not brighter, but rather like a louder sound coming out of, coming off of the board. Maybe it's just because of the nature of the salvation. Actually, maybe the vibration just kind of kind of getting transferred into the case kind of lends to a s somewhat, you know, quieter sound. But and maybe this is different. Like if you put this on a hard case, like a Fiel. Oh. Actually, well, we could try something like that. But like a fiel or like a clipe, I imagine maybe it's a slightly louder kind of sound to it. Um, but um, this is pretty nice. I have to say, I'm the feeling, the type feel of the plate itself is It does not feel it doesn't feel like any any particularly softer than like you would feel with like FR4. Or like aluminum something like that um, so yeah I think um, you shouldn't expect this to be like oh it's a soft material or anything like that I think that bottom out wise it's not that much different from the materials that we do use um, and the sound itself is like it is like this nice This nice soft 
at least in this board, it's slightly more quiet sound. And then, well, I guess it's kind of no surprise that also the alpacas are also a bit quieter after you lube them. So, yeah. Curious if you think the sound is unique compared to other materials. I think this might change with different switches. So like, so I think at least right now, from what I know about alpacas, it's not as that poppy sound that the alpacas tend to have. So at least it is different from what I know about alpacas to sound like. Um, so that's kind of like the main thing, but I imagine like if you use this plate with a different switch and then compare it, you know, the, the best way to compare this would be to have a build of the same kind of switches with a slightly different plate, right? Like with a different material and then just compare it side to side or like, you know, put it on, put it, put it off, put it on, put it on, you know, AB test. But I would say that alpacas tend to have this like kind of like pop sort of sound that comes from the switch itself that like the switch housing. But um, I maybe, I think, I think just maybe it's just the case and the, and the plate itself. They're kind of like muting that sound. They're kind of like making that sound a lot more muted than it, that usually I, I usually can tell from like boards built with those switches, like with alpacas. Um, but that said, um, you know, it does vary with like how you lube your switches and such. So it, it, it can change a bit. Yeah, it has a plasticky pop that uh, a lot of people will describe about like JWK switches and so, um, which isn't always unpleasant, uh, but it, it, it is a bit more characteristic sound to to them than let's say like cherry switches. Um, so so I think that's kind of like where they discern themselves from the rest. Uh, but at least in this particular case and build, we don't hear much of that. Although I do imagine what it, like I do wonder what's like with like different keycaps maybe. So I can always try um, taking the keycaps off and trying something else. So like I can try like GMK or something like that. Maybe I can just do that. We'll just leave the cars in one. But yeah, maybe you can try like GMK and then see what that sounds like. Cause, cause ABS, like CRP definitely sounds way different from the rest of the keycaps out there. It's like this very like, it's very specific sound to it. It's like very characteristic of CRP's PVT. PVT in general rather. It's like thick PVT cherry profile caps. So maybe we can try like a, like a GMK set, right? I'll just try what well, I have. What I have right here is Junky Hammerhead, so maybe we'll just try this. Here. That's a monkey type uh, dimmer. If you don't know the typing testing that you're asking about. Would you say that the wood plate feels stiff? I would say that it feels just right in the middle. It's not stiff and it's not soft. 
so somewhere in the middle. Aluminum or FR4 are probably comparable to it. Um, it like, you know, 1.5 millimeter aluminum, like the standard, your standard plate made out of aluminum or your standard plate made out of FR4. I think they are going to be not too much, not far off. I mean, like, if you measure the density of things, obviously, like, it might skew that information a bit. But I mean, as far as how it actually like feels empirically, you know, like in person, just like typing on it, it it really doesn't feel too far different from that. Like, it's not it's not soft, and it's not rigid either. It's just it's not exceedingly rigid or anything like that either. So, yeah, I would say it's nothing. Nothing that I would say like, oh man, can't type on this because it's too too harsh for me to use. Definitely not that. That's definitely not it. So, yeah. I think it would just... I think it depends on what you're... Th Ooh, shoot. Threshold is for that. Um, yeah. But it's pretty nice. I mean, I do really like the small details on the plate, like the cutouts for the clip, for the clipping of the plate, uh, for the switches on the plate is all is a nice detail that I feel like uh, anyone trying this for the first time could have easily overlooked. Um, another thing that's pretty nice is just like the overall. Like the way that the plate is made is like just pretty, pretty solid. Like, you know, like the, like the layers seem pretty s sturdily put together and nothing about it, at least visually and in use are, have any issues. So, so yeah. I mean, I made some suggestions, like some minor ones that can easily be changed, like slightly wider stab cutouts for anybody having trouble with stabilizers, um, slightly rounded corners for any cases that might have slightly more restricted space, and so on. All right, so this is now a GMK set. So this is GMK Hammerhead on this, and we're gonna try this out. All right, let's, let's try, let's give GMK ABS keycaps a try, okay? All right, here we go. Yeah, this sounds nice too. I like how ABS sounds as well. They sound very different. I did like actually I did really enjoy what CRP sounded like, but this is different too. So it's it's, it's nice to see the difference. Um, I can check the mods as well. Have you tried any chamois sets? Not yet. Uh, I do have some on order, but not no. I haven't gotten any sets myself yet. All right, here are the mods.
moths that definitely sound better than CRP. I see. So, so some people will find you know one prefer more preferable over the other. But yeah, um, I also like how the plate is visible between the cheese on GMK. I think the plate is more visible here because the color of the keycaps is a higher contrast compared to this. Uh, that where like these warmer colors kind of blend in with the silver and the wood plate color. But yeah, now right now you can probably see the plate because it's such a different color from the from the keycaps. Yeah, I, I would say that yeah, so I can think you can hear the organic wood resonance tone better on GMK. Yeah, I think uh compared to like the thick sort of sound that comes from this PVT set, like from CRP, um I I do think that maybe it's like a slightly cleaner sort of sound on, on the ABS. But that said, I think it's all at that point, it kind of really boils down to preference. I did enjoy what the CRP set sounded like on this. So so that's kind of like my take on it. Yeah. But it does sound very nice, nonetheless. Yeah. Wonder how the Mizu metal keycaps would sound? Oh, I mean, me metallic keycaps would sound very like, just sound kind of sound like a very thunky sort of sound, like just kind of like sinking in because they're very heavy. I just like how rectangle sounds, man. Yeah, man. Rectangles, amazing. I love rectangles. I was expecting it to be very deep, but this one took me by surprise and I low-key liked it. Yeah, I, I like it too. I, I personally think it's like, it's like the, it's perfect for the people who want to try different things out there. You know, the people who are like the, I really want to try something new. I really want to try something different. I want to, you know, I want it to look a certain way too. Like, cause the wooden plate kind of does look different, you know? Like if you take this out and you take a look at the, you know, at, at the keyboard itself, like you can see the wood kind of peek through, you know? And it does might look a little different. So this is perfect for the people who might want to experiment with different switches too. Maybe you have a hot swap 60% or a mil max or whatever, and you just want to change switches and keycaps until you get the right combo. Having the option of something like this is good. Um, and the fact that it's executed in a way that it's convenient because while the wooden plate is thicker, it still allows for proper clipping. It's still, you know, it still is like a tray mount compatible. So there's a lot of keys that support it. Um, so that part is nice. Um, it would certainly be interesting to see plates like these come into like, you know, to be able to be made for other kinds of keyboards as well. That would be interesting. Like kind of like the more custom keyboards out there with the top mount plate or whatever. That said, it complicates things because of the way you have to do these layering and then you have to like modify each of the cutouts and all that kind of stuff for the laser cutter. Uh, but that said, it is, it's pretty nice. It's something new. I think in the long run, it'll be something that's like an option available for people. So I, I do hope that, um, you know, for trilobite boards, it's something, it's an endeavor that's worth, worth pursuing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys want to support trilobite, um, I, I get no commission or anything out of this. So just saying, um, you know, you can go ahead and check out trilobiteboards.com and check out the plates there if you want to try it out. They retail at $55, um, which isn't necessarily a cheap price for a plate. Um, but at the same time, it is wood and it is wood is definitely always a challenge to work with no matter what do you think, whether it's cheap or easy to work with, um, like, you know, like whether it's laser cut or not, like I get it, but wood in general is just a little bit harder to work with. Um, so, so I understand the premium there. Made in USA too. So if you're local to the US, it will ship locally and you'll probably receive it within, I don't know, two to five days max, I suppose, um, because USPS prior mail is pretty fast these days. But yeah, mounting points can be made to be 1.5 millimeter thick if needed, so it will work with any gasket mount. Oh, that's nice. How nice. 
How nice. Would go well with GMK Maestro. Oh yeah, that would be a neat, neat themed board, like an instrument, musical instrument kind of keyboard. Ha, <laughs> no pun intended. It will be like a keyboard turned into a keyboard. Anyway, I'll stop there. Um, it's good to see the option though. So, yeah, I don't know what you guys think. What other thoughts you guys might have? But yeah, I I definitely thought it was it would be like maybe deep or maybe like very eccentric, but it still has a very clean sound to it. So it certainly doesn't have that like, so some metallic plates sometimes in certain cases have this kind of like ting sort of sound to them. It's not necessarily like an echo or a resonance, but they have like a very metallic thing to it. Because this is made out of wood, it definitely just does not have that at all. Uh, so that part is nice. I like how the mod sound on this though. Yeah. Still sounds like keyboard, yeah. So it went from keyboard to keyboard. What's the keycap? This is GMK Hammerhead. There's no way you made a lightning powered keyboard. Quit pulling our legs. Oh my god. You can never control the voltage. The keyboard would be fried. Oh, the Artisan? Oh, the Artisan. This is uh, Big Bad Wolf by Rubber Hose. Rubre Jose. <laughs> R U B R E. And then hose like a like a water hose. How much are they aftermarket? It varies quite a lot. It varies quite a lot. Probably anywhere from, probably above retail. So I think they retail at like 95. So they're, they're not cheap. They retail like 95 and then they probably go for several hundred bucks if, if desirable. Cheapest one is the one you get at retail at 95 plus shipping, probably. Anyway, that's the build. Aftermarket prices, I would say like a couple hundred bucks. But I mean, you can do that research yourself. I think it just depends on the colorway. Wooden plate, yes, wooden plate indeed. I mean, you guys want to check it out? It's right here. Wooden plate indeed. Yeah, let's actually tour the plate and the case a little bit since you guys didn't get to see it up close. But this is what the board looks like up close. I do like how it looks. This is a nice look. But yeah. You anyway, the salvation if you haven't seen it before. Nice and simple case. It supports left side USB PCBs. Um, of various kinds, whether it's USB-C or USB mini, it works. And uh, the bottom has this nice Wilbotech engraving. And on the inside, you'll find a small uh, PVD, I mean, maybe not PVD, black Cerakoted um, weight, brass weight, and on the inside, on the interior of the case. So it's a decently hefty case. It's not quite as light as you might think. Did the typing test happen? It, de it, it indeed did. Um, did it with CRP keycaps and did it with ABS GMK keycaps just now. How stiff is it? It's not quite stiff, okay? Like the like the plate itself is not like, it's just not that, it's not that stiff, but it's also not soft. It's just like, it's what you would expect from wood. But it's, I mean, it's, it's only 2.6 millimeters of wood, so it's really not that much. 
Why make a keyboard that just sits there while can quit pulling my leg? I see no computer and there's not even a wire to plug the keyboard to the computer. <laughs> yeah. Here's the wire though, if you're looking for it. <laughs> Can't show you the whole thing though, it's too much it doesn't fit in the in the frame of the camera here. But yeah. What's your favorite win keyless sixty percent board? Oh man, that's tough. There's a lot of nice boards though. Um win keyless specifically? Uh, I guess I guess I really like the hyphen that I have, which is which was run uh, in a very small format. Uh, but there's other ones. I mean, the K is pretty nice, but I have it in HKB, not not Win Keyless. But the Win Keyless one is pretty nice too. I mean, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same board, but the K is also very nice. There's a K over here. Would half plate next? I have to say that would be pretty interesting. I kind of, you know, I kind of want to put a wooden half plate. Or something. Actually, hmm. maybe I'll uh, switch this build. Maybe I'll actually put this plate over on my R1 unicorn or something eventually. That would be kind of nice. Uh, eventually, I don't know when. Let me put some MX clears. K versus profit. Ooh. Mm, I have both boards and I enjoy both quite a bit. Um, I think that I personally like the K just because of the nod to the whole HKB thing um, and it's a nice sounding board it's pretty soft but the profit honestly was really nice in my experience I think a lot of people tend to undervalue it because they say that you know there's a lot of them it goes for less in the aftermarket or whatever but I personally really did enjoy my profit and I still do um, I think it's a board that's pretty underrated just because it's a very like lightweight board um, and Yeah, like it's a very simple case, but I personally really like my profit. I, I actually hit my best Best typing speeds on my profit for a while and then eventually I broke that but it it, 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 it it was a board that I really enjoyed typing on while I was using it like very actively so I like both a lot. They're both very solid 60%. They're just slightly different. Like the case, like a two piece, like, you know, it's like this two piece case with a very different look. So it all depends on whether you like the look too on the K. Um, the Profit is also different in the sense that it has a, I think it has a left side USB port. So that's different from the K, which has a centered USB port. That kind of stuff also will matter to you, like the aesthetic. Um, so yeah. I don't like the small feet on the profit. It sinks into my desk mat easily and resonates on the whole desk. Oh, I see. I didn't have that specific issue, but uh, I could see that. Uh, and I mean, I also do have like different bump ons if I need to use them. But yeah, what's the final verdict? Our friendship lies in your decision. I, I like this plate. I mean, the 60% wooden plate. I think it's a nice option if you want to experiment a lot of it. I'm not sure if I would purchase it right away because I tend to be a little bit more on the complacent side. I tend to be like, oh, I have a, if I have an alu full plate, I'll just be like, oh, I'll just use the alu full plate because that's what I bought. Um, I don't tend to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend my 60 bucks on this new plate right away until I kind of figure I need a change, uh, which is not very frequent. I tend to, I tend to kind of settle for what I have and enjoy that for what it is. Try to see the bright th bright side in things, you know, like just 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 be be comfortable with what you own rather than always try to crave for more. Although that's not necessarily the case for me all the time either. It's just that, at least for keyboards these days, I try my best to to stick to to stick to what I have. You get sent a Q QK sixty five. I did not send a QK. I was not sent a QK sixty five. Yeah. I was not sent the QK65. I don't have that kind of self-control. Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, if I have to be frank with you, it took me a while to kind of get to the point where I am. Like, it took me a while of trying different boards and also figuring out that I'm not that picky. Um, and just to stick to the things that I like 
as much as possible so that I don't have to be indecisive and feel conflicted every time there's something new. I think that's a big, big thing. It's like every time when something new comes out, if you're the type who gets nervous about it because you feel like you might like it and then you might, it might, it might completely shatter your view on things, then, uh, yeah. I'm more picky with sound than with anything else, I see. How much spent until you started to resist? Uh, I'm not gonna disclose that. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a, a lot of money spent before I started to resist. Maybe it was the money, <laughs> but I don't know that. It's a mix of factors. Uh, anyway. Hello, Salvation Wen. I'm only who I am. I hope it's soon. I really hope it is soon. Did you ever swap the O-ring on your K? Uh, I, no, I, st I stuck with the default one, I'm pretty sure. I don't care about sound that much, unless it sounds like hot trash. Yeah, I feel that way too. I don't care about sound nearly as much, unless it's like unbearable. I don't like certain Certain builds that just sound sound unbearable. Yeah, it's it's not often, but yeah, there's there's times when I build something and I'm just like, man, this ain't it. I'm also gonna switch back to CRP because I actually really enjoyed the look of the Desco Black on this. So I'm gonna switch back. While wow, we're just chatting, we did finish stream a little early today, so I'm just gonna chat for a bit. He just ran out of my not money, not self control. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. I just like the high variety. I mean, I have variety. I have variety, but yeah. See, I'm starting to have self control over my purchases after a good two years in this hobby. It took me probably longer than two years. So at least you're better off than I am. I am only who I am. It took me longer than two years. But that said, I also spaced out my purchases a lot, guys. Like I. I did go ham on my, I think I went really ham on my second year in the hobby, but then on my first year and like my third year in the hobby, I was it, it, like, you can see there's like a big valley. <laughs> like I didn't really go too, too hard because I had real, like in the first year I was still figuring out what to do and I was very indecisive. In the second year, I was like, I'm just gonna try everything or like everything that I see that I think I'm gonna like, I'm just gonna try it. And then on my third year in the hobby, uh, Cause right now I've been in the hobby since late 2016, so I've been in the hobby for for what, um, five years, five and some, right? Let's let's say five five and a half years. And but yeah, like basically after the second year, starting from my third year, it was like the settling towards this like plateau, where I was just like, oh, I think I like I know what I like, like both in terms of keyboards and keycaps, artisans, whatever. And then I started to sort of just settle into that one, uh, like that specific preference alone. And so I was like, oh, okay, you know, I like TKLs and 60% more, so I'm not gonna participate in 65% or 75% group buys nearly as much. Uh, I also wanna save for other things. Maybe I wanna travel more. Maybe I wanna spend on food. Maybe I wanna just be uh, safer, save for some, like, you know, like whatever investment or a bigger expense. Uh, so I kind of like started being a bit more self-conscious about that too. But yeah, like it kind of shifted that way for me over time. But it took, 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 took a few years. Took a few years. Definitely going ham second year in the hobby. Yeah, I think second year in the hobby is when you go ham. It's not the first year. It's not the first year when you go. There's some people who go ham the first year because they can just simply afford it. And that's kind of like what they're used to. They're just like, I'm just going to go all, all the way in right away. But I'm indecisive. Like I was not very, I was not a decisive person. So I would always hesitate right at the point of checkout, basically. I would always add it to my cart and I'll be like, shit. No, I don't want it. And you know what? Some of my biggest regrets in my hobby is passing on some things. I passed on 910 for retail before. I passed on some key sets for retail before. I passed on some artisan caps for basically retail before. I decided I love. <laughs> yes, Italian Spider Man is not very Italian in the sense that they they have a they have a fervorous love for America, 
and um, yes, and USA artisans are the best. I, I, I love America too, and I also love USA artisans. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. TED talk. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I love USA artisans. I love USA. Konako. Where's Konako actually? Kona W. My bad. I love USA. <laughs> what are your highlights in the hobby so far? I mean, the bigger highlights I think for me were meeting certain people in the hobby is a big one when like meetups were more possible and stuff. I think that's, I think the lack of meetups is really, has really changed how a lot of people feel about the hobby in general. I think once you start being able to go to meetups, whether they're small ones local to you or or like further ones, like, you know, ones further away from you that you might travel for, um, they're totally worth it. it. It really changes your perspective on what's out there and what you have and how that affects how you interact with the hobby. I think that's a huge thing. I personally really, really highly suggest people to try traveling to a meetup, um, like, you know, close or, or not close by, but I, I guarantee you it will blend things together too because you'll realize how keyboards are pretty much very similar to each other like keyboards at a meetup start really not mattering when you go there <laughs> because there's the interesting part is hanging out with the people and like you know having drinks food just talking um about mutual interests and whatnot and then the whole keyboard thing kind of dissipates and you start caring less about this whole like I gotta chase all these things but sometimes there, it happens that if it's your first or a few first few meetups you get get this thirst for more you start feeling like oh my fucking god these people have this and I don't I don't I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check Mac market I'm gonna buy it right away five thousand dollar teacher chain here I come so that happens um so so yeah so that happens too um, so, so it all depends on what kind of person you might be. Some people just kind of feel that, feel that way, you know? Been going ham every year since Drax, yeah, man. Let's see. feel like it, I'm shifting into, I went to, to a side money for, set aside money for other things and I'm starting to know what I like. Yeah, that's good. Didn't go all in, slowly built a collection, then sold it all and went all in now. 7v sat on my cart a bunch of times. Yep, 7v sat on my cart. And I passed on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I passed on several GMK sets like that too. I put them in my cart and then forgot about it. And then I realized the last day of the group buy for the things that would be like unlimited group buy, for example, I'll be like, huh, don't care about it enough that I'm not checking out. So I'm not going to get it. So I ended up not getting stuff because of that. It's so hard to choose a 75%. Imagine, Daoku says it's so hard to choose a 75% budget keyboard and back years ago there was no such thing as oh easy 75% budget keyboard choice as in like there was not even a choice <laughs> because there were not many of those if at all there was like KB75 and that, that was about it and like maybe a few other like OEM stuff out there clocks all the made in America true um let's see pass on botanical R1 kick myself non-stop until R2 yeah, meetups are the best. I do agree. Were you getting that discount? Okay, my bad, my bad. I get Switch Envy at meetups. Yeah, Switch Envy is real rather than keyword keyword envy. Buys 5k calam unknowingly. Oh my god, that is so tragic. Doesn't matter in the end you have a Jane. Again, it all depends on your perspective. Some people are like that. Some people are like, hey man, I spent all this money and it was worth it because now I own it. Probably 90s, 80 or something. Stuck between Q1 and KD75. I will tell you right now that either option is pretty solid. One thing is, actually, well, no, KD75 also comes with hot swap now too. So they're all hot swap, programmable, pretty much around the same pricing level. Yeah, um, both choices are pretty solid. They're customizable in ways. So you can't go wrong with either, I think. Just, just take a look at the layout. I think. Oh, Kenny seventy five is a compressed seventy five percent. So if the layout thing makes a difference for you, that could be your deciding factor. You want seventy five percent? Get a duck board. Oh, well, my first, my first custom keyboard was a duck octagon V one. That was a seventy five percent um, Korean custom. That I, that was my first big, big boy custom in the, in the scene. 
I still have it actually. Kenny 75 and TX 95 were the only ones back then, and TX 95 was like a rarity too. Sometimes, like you could not find it at times, because you had to like scour Mech Market. It was a pain in the butt, basically. 75 percent were actually kind of rare in between before. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I like this look much better though. Mm. Look at this now. We have, we have Hammerworks Desco Black on this. Looking sweet. Looks so nice. Wasn't there a 75% version of the of the B phase? Yes, the LZ75 existed. It was called. It was not the CPSQ. It was something else. Something else. LZ. Yeah, it, it was LZ's like 75% like uh, stacked acrylic. I remember. That was back in the day. Wow, that was a long time ago. That was like 20. 20 LZ MX. No, it was something else. The MX Mini is the the SE version. Of the, the there's like the 75 percent version of the SE. That's a different one. That's like a metallic one. But yeah, I, I remember there was something like that. CLS M. No, it was before the CLS series happened. By the way, do I'm obsessed with my new thermal? Sandra, isn't the thermal so nice? Isn't it so interesting? It's such an interesting type feel on the thermal. I I love I love the thermal as a keyboard. I think it's such an interesting board. Even though it has its it has its ups and downs, like it has its good parts and its bad parts to it, but it's so interesting. It's such a such a unique board. I personally love it because of that, though. LCMX Mini SE, yeah, that's the expensive one. That's the that's the, the those are those are all the the expensive boards. Looking forward to Thermal Plus, yeah. Thermal Plus also was looking pretty spicy, although very different because the grills are on the top rather than on the sides. Singa was a thing too. Singa was a thing until like mid late 2017, if I recall. It was a. It took a while for Singa to happen. Singa was not that early. I remember it was like in, after my first year. Yeah. Cause I remember the first round of the Singa was like a basically like a private run. The Singa seventy five percent rather. It was like a bunch of people on KB Customs. If you don't buy a case, you can save up to more than half price for a keyboard. I guess that's true. I remember the Poly Singa was a new hotness. I mean, Poly keyboards were the new hotness when the nine ten and the MXSS came out on Geekhack. Well, the 910 was also the 910 RE, the 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 polycarbonate 910 was also like a, a a small run, like a small group run, and it was basically private FNF. So that was kind of like, and people were like, "Oh my god!" They saw photos, and I remember that MX Blue ran the MX SS 65%, and that took forever. That group I was a bit of a mess. It did fulfill actually. Um, but I remember that was what really started the Polycarp craze, and then the Singa came out, the this Polycarp Singa came out, and then like a bunch of other keyboards started coming out in Polycarp. And then now it's like, it's really funny, we've come full circle after that since then, like since like 2018 or so, that people are like, oh, I don't want my Polycarp case anymore because it feels so plasticky, I like my aluminum, it feels nice and cold. Yeah, so so I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it is now. So yeah, it kind of comes full circle like that. But yeah, it was a new hotness for a while though with all the RGB stuff. Same thing with stabs and switches as well. Yeah, that is true. But I personally think polycarb cases are sick. I mean, especially if you like the like some of the light diffusion or just the idea that like frost. Frosted plastics look really good in the light. Put like shine a nice like put it put like warm lighting around it or just like or like if you're maybe like taking it outside just take a few pictures of it. Frosted plastics just in general look so sick. 
in certain lighting. That's what I do really do like about like polycarb cases and such, or even acrylic, like frost acrylic. Can look really cool. And the sound is good too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it uh it lacks any of that like metallic resonance that you get from cases made out of aluminum. I've got an actual real Rukia and it's one of my favorite boards. Yeah, it's a nice board. Polycarb Alice owners be like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, I do have some people in the chat who I know that were in the unfortunate second round. So, or are rather, oh man, so, so sad. But yeah, snaps and switches the same. We've kind of come full circle. Cherry, Gadron, the best! And then it was like, oh my god, Gadron is coming out with new switches. Oh, inks, wow. Kale creams, wow. Um, box switches, oh my god. And then box gate happened. Oh my god, I hate box switches. Box switches are the worst. Novel key should burn. And then, and then novel keys obviously like you know gets you know gets back up and like you know like figures all that out. And then and then you know like all the JWK craze starts coming out because you know like there was a whole like. Zelio Stelio stealing drama thing with which was basically Jurok. By the way, just so you know, Jurok and JWK are the same people who were behind the whole Zelio Gadron mold stealing thing, just FYI. There's an irony there where where we love Jurok and JWK, but that all stemmed from that conflict. Anyway, um and now it's like oh my god, JWK is super smooth, and now it's like oh my god, JWK is so plasticky. I love Cherry again. I love Cherry and Gadron. Cherry and Gadron the best, OG the best. So it's kind of funny how that goes. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> switches also like goes like that. And look at look at look at look at TX TX stabs now. Oh my god! Oh, before <clears throat> you know, I used to use clip ins and then you know screw ins started coming out from Cherry and GMK would purchase them and resell them right. And like our vendors would pick those up. It would be like, oh yeah, screw ins. Oh yeah. Mm. Stays on the board, never, never pop out. You know, screw ins best. Zeal screw ins also very nice. And then you know, Enjoy PVT uh, screw ins came out, which were basically uh, copies of like the Zeal ones, right? And it's like, oh yeah, clear screw in steps. Mm, very nice plastic. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then, and then now it's like we've come kind of back full circle where you have these TX TX stabs, and TX stabs are like clipping, right? And they're like, oh yeah, clipping's goaded. Clipping's the best. Clipping's work with O ring keyboards. Oh yes, never have to worry about it. Uh, never have to worry about putting the stupid screw and the goddamn, um, you know, O ring that like I insulates electrically. Oh ha ha. And and now it's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, cherry clippings were always goaded. I knew this since 2015 and you guys never listened. But yeah, that's how it goes with stabs too. So yeah, it, it all kind of goes in a circle. Keyboards, stabs, switches. <laughs> yeah. Now everyone uses the same, the same stabs under the name of Durok. Kind of true. Kind of a keck wait moment. You're like the, oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, but they're all like about the same. So that's why it doesn't really matter what stabs you purchase these days as far as like, because they're all kind of very, very similar now. Like they all have kind of reached a point of convergence to some extent where like as long as you loop your stabs properly, you should be able to have functioning good stabs. You will have to re-loop them every so often though, but I mean, that's with every stab. Not even your TX clip-ins, well, you'll eventually probably have to re-loop those two. Uh, at least slightly, so yeah. People got pissed at Wayfans for buying Stelios, but now everybody uses JWK, which made those Stelios. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's so funny. It's so funny when if, when you when you know some of the history, you, you realize how how funny the community can be when because the community is short lived. Let's be honest. Like the the thing about the hobby is that most people come in and maybe stick around for about I I would say the average amount of time. General user won't stay longer than a year normally. The interest wanes very quickly. They get what they need and they get out. Uh, people who become the the what we so call enthusiasts maybe will stick around for about a year and two. If they go pretty ham in the first couple of years, they tend to burn out pretty quickly too. 
So they're the ones who might spend on more expensive stuff, progressively more expensive stuff, and then they realize, Oh my god, I've spent so many thousands of dollars on these keycap sets and keyboards, I should stop spending on keyboards, I have more than I need, and then they also burn out and leave. So in general, the enthusiast community also doesn't last more than one or two years at best per cycle. So every one or two years, you see a big shift of people, like the, the, the specific individuals in the hobby. So, um, so it, normally those trends will be about that long too. So in about two years, most people will have forgotten what happened the two years prior to that. So yeah. So what cycle am I on? I'm on like on my third cycle, quote unquote, because I'm on like my sixth year in the hobby now. So I'm on my at the end of my third cycle, quote unquote. It's like the third epoch, third era <laughs> of my own keyboard journey. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to see all this. But yes, I do. I, small wallets, slow burn, enjoy the hobby more. This is actually kind of true. If you do spend more slowly or enjoy the hobby in small bursts, you do tend to get a lot out of it because you'll get to see like the changing trends and then you'll only pick up very limited number of things uh, because that's what you're limited to ability wise. Is re solder switches a thing or too much work? Uh, you need to desolder them most likely to open them up. So. Uh, soldered switches to open them. The only way to open a soldered switch is if there's no plate around it or if there is a plate that supports uh, top housing removal. Switch top removal is what people call it. But not, most plates don't do, don't have that support. So um, yeah, you will most likely have to remove the switches from the plate to be able to open them up. 